Hi, Norma Shepard here with another Hat Chat. I'm the director of the Mobile Millinery Museum and the author of five books on vintage fashion, including 1,000 hats. I have brought you some florals today because we are just two days away from the summer solstice and I thought it might be a really nice time to celebrate flowers. So it's a bit of a random haul, but a very colorful one, and we will just dig right in. Um, some of the most um, <laughs> beautiful um, hats outside of the Edwardian era were the wonderful uh, florals in the 1950s and 60s. Now this one is uh, primarily a cone shape and it has lots of different fabric petals and uh, representations of different types of flowers and maybe I should twist this a little a little slower. I need a lazy Susan or something to show these on. Um, if you take a close look, many of these have the little, the little stamens, the little pearlized uh, tips. They're quite wonderful. Now, the cone shape is primarily associated with uh, 1950s, although there are cone shapes with a flat top, almost like um, a volcano that the top of the mountain has blown off and they are more reminiscent of late 1930s, maybe early 1940s. These more pointed cone shaped hats were associated with uh, 1950s styling, but this one in particular has a very interesting shape and I want to show you um, the interior. This is done on a mesh base. Uh, the rim is wired and covered in velvet. But you can see that it's not strictly a cone like you might roll up with paper, but it has this almost egg-shaped center crown. So very imaginative and would have sat quite perkily, perkily, is that a word? On um, just straight up on the top of the head. Something a little different is this earlier hat. This is a Milan straw and it is sweet. It has a sort of a um, bonnety look and it's very fine straw. Let me just give it a tap here. Um, and this straw would come in a bale and whoever created the hat would be um, taking it off the bale and this would be sewn in concentric circles until you got this wonderful shape. It's sort of a, a lemony yellow and the pink is such a nice contrast against this. Look at the rosebuds done in velvet. So this uh, has no maker's label and no lining but it has a very wide grow grain inner band. Quite a lovely piece. Now another old soft um, Milan straw hat is this pink one. So the straw is the base this is also uh, wired on the rim. No lining. There may have been lining and then these flower petals in pink and green leaves are applied over top. It's a very low fitting hat. The little um, band is from velvet. And this looks to be from the early 1930s, maybe the late 20s. Very likely, very likely a wedding hat. Speaking of weddings, this wildly floral, almost looks woodsy, uh, like an overgrown garden. I think it's wonderful. It is a bubble toque style and this is from the 1960s. Very likely a mother of the bride hat, possibly a grandmother of the bride hat, or even the bride herself had this as a going away hat back when that was the custom. 
it's uh, wonderfully done and lined in satin. There's no maker's mark. Another custom piece. But, um, oh, I think we have some matching green. Oh, green and pink. Yeah, a wonderful combination. And again, you can see these wonderful little stamens. That really adds, you know, it's the details that add so much interest. And you can still buy those today from millinery supply houses if you're making your own hats. Now, another one from the 1960s is this bubble toque, very sort of crown shaped. And this does look a little matronly. It was probably a mother of the bride had. And of course, the custom was always, if you were the mother of the groom, you checked with the mother of the bride first to find out what color she was planning to wear. Um, these little uh, pearlized tips on the ends of the fabric petals give it a little bit of movement. And then, of course, we have this delicate veiling. So this has just been a little short, um, a little short cheery floral <laughs> to bring on the, the summer solstice. Now the hat I'm wearing is a fascinator by Maria Kiersick, a millinery designer in Canada, out in BC. This is not a sponsored video. She is just uh, the milliner I sort of go to for some of my pieces when I'm doing hat shows. It, it's very secure. It's just secured with a chignon strap under the hair. Doesn't move. And it's it's just a sweet, sweet summer hat. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Please let me know in your comments what topics you'd like me to cover. And um, hit like, subscribe, share, hit the notification bell. I do post Mondays and Thursdays. Have a happy evening. This next one is also from my personal collection. This was actually a birthday gift to me this year. It's a wonderful spring and summer floral with some ribbon on straw, light as a feather, chignon strap. Uh, between this one and the last one, I'm really into green right now, I guess. Oh, yes, I am. This actually is has a Louise green label. Now, she's an American, an American millinery designer. And as long as we're talking about green, I'll reach for the next green one. Now this is from very likely circa 1968. It's a very high crown bubble toque of that era. It uh, says to me that this was very likely a wedding hat in that it was perhaps a mother of the bride piece or the mother of the groom or the um, maybe even the mother of the grandmother. The mother of the... the, the, the or maybe even the grandmother of the bride. Uh, of course, if there are any imperatives left around the wearing of uh, wedding attire, it is that if you're the mother of the groom, you always check with the mother of the bride first to find out what color she intends to wear. So we're not sure if it was groom, or mother of the groom, or mother of the bride, but it is almost a crown-shaped, uh, nice little delicate veiling over the brow and there's some little pearlized tips that give a bit of movement to this hat. Some of the petals, of course, uh, have come, come loose over the years. 1968 was a long time ago. Yeah. And it's a very well-made custom piece. It is lined, but we have, we have no ma maker's mark. Moving right along with some more green, this time green and pink, is this wonderful piece. This just, to me, looks like an overgrown garden. It's wonderful. I love the contrasting shades of pink on this and the way the flowers just pop out. The um, green leaves and tendrils um, looks very woodsy. It actually reminds me somewhat of a, a hat that we have from... Um, a performance in Cirque du Soleil. Very woodsy. Of course, that Cirque du Soleil hat does not have the roses, but it does have a lot of the foliage. And at some point, I will do a, uh, a video on that as well. So this is also 
circa 1968, very high crown, very showy. And this too could have been a mother of the bride, mother of the groom, could have been a bride's going away hat. And I like the way the crown is just shaped to come up a little bit over one eye. And maybe, who knows, maybe the original owner parted her hair on this side and the hair would have um, also swept uh, in sync off to this, my left, your right um, side in symmetry with the hat. You know, if you're making hats, uh, details are important. You can still get these wonderful stamens from millinery supply houses. Yeah, it's, it's a sweetheart. So we'll go back a little further with this next one. Still a lovely floral. This is a very fine, soft, pink straw. Um, lovely summer piece, very likely from the late 1920s or early 1930s. And the stamens on these are very pearlized. This could use some steaming. A little narrow velvet band and some deep green leaves, fabric leaves from way back when. Giving a bit of contrast. So looking for the center back, show you how this was worn. So this would have sat, sat sort of at the back of the head. Now another very soft, this, this is a Milan straw, an early piece. Look at this, isn't it wonderful? Uh, such a soft lemon or buttery yellow, and it's a very um, flexible um, straw fashioned from the center crown. This would have been very fine straw, which would come on a bale. Just a wonderful piece. And the uh, soft pink is a great contrast to the buttery yellow. And we have some velvet rosebuds. It's not a lined piece. And it would sit, sit at the back of the head. Last one I want to show you is brightly colored and cone shaped. This may have been early 1960s. Some of the hats fashioned in the 60s were some of the most lavish you'll ever see. And just look at the um, profusion of different types of floral petals. And again, it has sort of a sort of a wild overgrown look about it. There's a few little pearly stamens. Now although it's cone shaped and of course I've mentioned before that different styles uh, will be done again and again and in, in, with variations. It is not one of those that has the flat top of the volcanic mountain look. It's um, very triangular, yet inside you can see that it's uh, nicely formed with sort of an egg shape uh, center to cause it. It's almost, um, I think of these, <laughs> as being little cocktail hats or uh, might have been a little church hat. You would need you would need some bobby pins to secure this on. So there you have it. Just a little nod to the solstice with a celebration of some flowers. Um, I post Mondays and Thursdays. Please leave me notes in the comments if you'd like. If you're interested in a particular style of hat, wanting to know more about them, or uh, even a particular designer or era, anything to do with vintage fashion, and I will be happy to address that. I hope you've enjoyed this. Hit like, share, subscribe, um, and uh, if you have a mind to, and have a happy evening. Thanks.